HBO are making a Harry Potter TV show which might hit our screens as early as 2026. Now I've been quite clear about the fact that I think the movies do a perfectly good job telling the story, so we don't need a reboot TV show just yet. With that in mind, I looked into the most popular ideas for spin-off TV shows, and today I'm going to be ranking how much I'd like to see each of those ideas grace our screens. So the most popular idea for a spin-off that I've heard is a series that follows the Marauders through their time at Hogwarts. James Potter, Sirius Black, Remus Lupin, Peter Pettigrew navigating their time through school. Now we know there's plenty of good material to make this show. There's the Lupin being a werewolf plot where the others find out and eventually become Animagus. There's the feud with Snape. James trying to court Lily, Sirius's very trepidatious relationship with his family, plus the building of tension as, away from Hogwarts, Voldemort rises to power and the first war begins to take shape. There is a lot of good stuff. But with that being said, we sort of know how it all goes already. And this is part of my issue with the reboot show. Stories that can intrigue us and have us throwing around ideas and theories. Not original stories like the Fantastic Beast movies, which were shoehorned into just being Dumbledore prequels. Actual original shows fleshing out the wizarding world. With a Marauders show, there wouldn't be that much tension when it comes to finding out Remus is a werewolf. The love triangle with Snape, Lily and James wouldn't really be like the Twilight love triangle with Team Edward versus Team Jacob, because we know that Lily picks James. There's going to be no mystery or building of tension around who is the spy in the First Order of the Phoenix, because we know it's Pettigrew. And we know the whole story culminates in James and Lily being killed, Sirius going to prison for murdering Wormtail, although he doesn't actually, and I just think it belittles it when we know everything that happens. Like sure, you could tell some good original stories in this show, and if you make it character driven you would still have beautiful moments regardless of the plot points, but for me there is not enough in this show that leaves me wanting more, because I know how it all ends. I'm sure it will be fun to watch, but not gripping. Like I said, I really want to engage in fan theories online and be gripped by a plot in which there are twists and turns that I don't see coming, and that's only something that can happen from a show with an original story and mostly original characters. So for that reason, the Marauders spin-off, I'm lingering between B and C tier. I think we're gonna go C. Another of the most popular ideas I've heard from fans is a spin-off centered around the Hogwarts founders. And unlike the Marauders, we know very little about the four people who started the school. Like there are little tidbits in the Harry Potter series, mostly the Sorting Hat songs where we find out small bits of information about them. Like it's said that they were four of the most gifted wizards of their age and they come together to start the school. But because of the time that they live in and their abilities, there are so many plot threads that we could explore away from Hogwarts. Like these four are from different parts of the country with different values, and it almost gives Game of Thrones vibes. Especially because they start as friends, but later, particularly Gryffindor and Slytherin, have a huge falling out. We obviously will have Slytherin's secrecy in building the Chamber of Secrets and hiding a monster in there, which would be a great plotline. Plus, the time this takes place would be through the early 11th century, a time period where our four main characters would almost certainly cross paths with other interesting characters like Merlin. And from Merlin, we get characters like Morgana Le Fay, who in the extended universe was King Arthur's half-sister and has a huge rivalry with Merlin. And there's even a theory that she invented one or all of the unforgivable curses. And so all of these different possible threads, this show could go in so many different directions. It could have political undertones. It could explore dark magic and friendship and family and betrayal. Early relationships between wizard kind and muggles. Plus with history in the 11th century, we could explore Scandinavians coming to Britain and what that might look like for a Scandinavian wizard civilization. Like, I'm talking Viking wizards. Plus, we could have the Battle of Hastings in 1066, one of British history's most famous battles. And honestly, I think this show scratches an itch of wanting an original and compelling story with plot points that could go anywhere, while also catering to fans, allowing Easter eggs and fan service. Like it's far enough removed that it doesn't really retcon or ruin anything in the same way that Fantastic Beasts does. Like McGonagall should not have been a teacher in those films. She was teaching at Hogwarts and I don't even think she's supposed to be born yet. Like you know how House of the Dragon, the Game of Thrones prequel, you hear mentions of families like the Lannisters and you just get that sense of familiarity, but it doesn't taint their history or the characters we grew to love in the original series. Having that in this show with mentions of the noble houses and their distant ancestors, I'm so excited about this concept. It offers so much possibility 
I'm going to put it in God tier. Remember all those Saturday morning cartoons like Spider-Man and the X-Men where you could just drop in and watch any episode? Or like Scooby-Doo, there would be a new villain or a mystery every week with nothing too heavily linked to a season-long storyline. Imagine that, but Harry Potter. 20-minute episodes that center around Harry, Ron, and Hermione just solving small mysteries around Hogwarts and the Wizarding World. You could get a glimpse into Hogwarts' life, Supporting characters like Neville and Ginny and Flitwick, they'd be in some episodes, but like not all of them. And you don't really need to stick to bigger season long storylines. Like you can if you want, but mostly the episodes could be self-contained. Sounds pretty excellent to me. One week we could have a rogue poltergeist who is usually at Durmstrang, but the trio have to figure out why they've come to Hogwarts and how to send them back or make them feel more at ease at Hogwarts so they stop terrorizing all the first years. In a different episode, we could have a random rare magical creature that Hagrid was looking after going missing in the Forbidden Forest and the trio have to help find where they've got to. There could be Quidditch episodes, episodes that revolve around classroom assignments, episodes about centaurs, haunted Hogsmeade shops. In a world this reach, there is no end to what you could do. And with self-contained stories, it doesn't run the risk of ruining any of the canon story from the books. Now there is the obvious drawback that this is going to be a bit juvenile and childish, particularly for the generations that grew up loving Harry Potter. So like, I'm not sure I'd want this to be the only Harry Potter project. But if you think I'm not at least putting these on in the background while I'm working, you have another thing coming. I'm giving this an A rating. I think the possibilities are endless. So I think the Half-Blood Prince movie's very infamous decision to leave Voldemort's backstory out of the film has caused an appetite for a Voldemort backstory as its own story. And so there are loads of fan films out there and fan fictions all about Voldemort's time at Hogwarts. A story depicting his journey from the orphan that Dumbledore brought to Hogwarts through to making his first Horcrux, establishing the early Death Eaters and eventually going to war maybe even picking up his time between the two wars before he's resurrected as well. Doesn't that just sound so compelling? It's dark and it's dramatic, but I do think that given Voldemort is a character who famously doesn't have friends, doesn't fall in love, just sort of uses people, it's kind of hard to flesh out a TV show without any tension or conflict coming from interpersonal relationships. You'd almost need it to be an ensemble cast about the people around him, like Lucius and Narcissa falling in love and battling their conflicting loyalties to each other and to Voldemort's cause. Or maybe you'd want it to be told from the perspective of an aura investigating the charming, well-liked Tom Riddle as he ascends to his position as a Dark Lord, and that helps tell his early story. And that, through the eyes of the aura, helps tell Voldemort's early story. In the same way Dumbledore collects memories from people like Bob Ogden to piece the story together, this aura could do something similar. Overall, I feel kind of similar to this concept as I do about the Marauders. Like we know it ends with him creating Horcruxes, then going to kill the Potters, and then he gets defeated by a rebounding curse. Only unlike the Marauders show, Voldemort's daily one-dimensional character doesn't really allow for as gripping of a show in terms of character moments. So I'm kind of stuck between a low C and a D rating for this idea. I think maybe it creeps into C just because Voldemort's backstory is one of my favorite parts of the whole Harry Potter series. It just doesn't really lend itself to a TV show, in my opinion. Changing tones then from a dark magic and lore heavy fantasy TV series, I think a Quidditch drama would be a very interesting change of pace from everything we've had in the Harry Potter universe so far. Think Ted Lasso, but with magic, maybe. Or you could go grittier and look at the football drama Dream Team from the late 90s. Or maybe like a limited series in like a Moneyball style. Or maybe a show about the formation of the all-female Quidditch team, the Hollyhead Harpies, the team that Ginny eventually goes on to play professional Quidditch for. You know how that film Remember the Titans uses sports to address issues of racism in the South? Maybe a Quidditch drama about the Hollyhead Harpy setting up an all-female team to combat innate sexism in Quidditch or the wizarding world as a whole, maybe that would be an interesting angle. There's actually a true story about football in the UK, and if you let me digress slightly, it alleges that women in the 1920s played football in front of sellout crowds in stadiums. So after the men had gone off to fight in World War I in the late 1910s, women had taken many of their jobs in places like factories, and they were good at them. So when men came back from the war, there was a bit of a panic, 
that women were stealing the jobs that men once had. And this panic was replicated in the English Football Association, who thought women were taking the attention away from men. So where women's teams had famously played in front of a 53,000 person sellout crowd in the early 1920s at Goodison Park, the Football Association then banned women's teams from playing at any of their official grounds. So they weren't banned from playing, they just sort of took all of their major resources away. Which meant that even though there was clearly a demand for it, women were forced to play at tiny community facilities where far fewer people could watch. And so then the number of people following women's football dwindled. Meanwhile, the men's game grew and grew and grew. And it didn't just happen in the UK. Places like Australia followed the English FA's example and provided far less resources to the women's game. So all of that is to say, I would love a female-led Quidditch drama with political undertones that replicates the football story I just told you, taking on powerful men in the Ministry of Magic, trying to push for women's inclusion in Quidditch, leading to the formation of the Hollyhead Harpies, an all-female Quidditch team. I really like this idea as a much more grounded story told in the setting of the Wizarding World. A strong female cast, female writers, female filmmakers. I'm giving this a solid A. It could even be god tier if it was done right. So we've touched upon the first Wizarding War already in this video, either from the Marauder's perspective or the perspective of Voldemort's rise to power. And you already know my opinion on telling a story where we already know how it ends. So this idea isn't much different. Making it about the Order at least gives this concept the freedom to explore a lot of other characters that we know very little about, like the McKinnons or Molly Weasley's brothers Fabian and Gideon Pruitt, the Bones family, Benji Fenwick, Cardacon Dearborn. Cardacon, I think it's Cardarac? Cadarock? What is a Cardacon? It's Caradoc, right? Anyway, if you've only seen the films, it's gonna sound like I just made up a bunch of names. But these were all members of the original Order of the Phoenix who didn't make it out of the First War alive. And so a story focused on them and the First Order, we could have really cool espionage plot lines, great character development, a phenomenal ensemble show with lots of moving parts, and then the final season could lend itself to a bunch of Game of Thrones style huge battles. I'm not talking about the battles from the final season of Game of Thrones, we like to pretend that doesn't exist, more like the Battle of Blackwater or like the Red Wedding style scenes. Just these characters you've come to know and love being picked off one by one as Voldemort ascends to power. And it's almost like the end of Rogue One because the Knight at the Potters would cause Voldemort's downfall so the good guys would technically get what they want, but they lose so many of them along the way. I think there's scope for it to be decent, but it is too close to the original Harry Potter series for me to really love it. We're gonna go B tier. Sir Herpa the Fowl in the extended Harry Potter lore was the first dark wizard to create a horcrux, and he also apparently was the first wizard to ever hatch a basilisk too. Now he was an ancient Greek wizard who supposedly lived until he was about 900 years old. Now I'm much more of a fan of a TV show with an ensemble cast and lots of characters to form complex stories with, so a show centering around just Herpo the Fowl as the lead? Like, there's a lot you could do with it. He might not have always been this dark wizard, so maybe it's a story where you see his slow descent into this horrible, dark sorcerer. Almost like a Walter White Breaking Bad style story where you're rooting for him to begin with but he just slowly becomes worse and worse of a person until eventually he's a complete monster. I actually think I'd love that. Plus an ancient Greek setting for a Wizarding World drama sounds so fun. That said, whilst Herpo the Fowl might be an interesting character, I feel like I get way more excited for concepts rather than just here's a character, make a show about them. And so for that reason, we're giving this a C. For the longest time, I have been screaming out for an aura story, a gritty crime drama following two auras as they solve crimes. The two auras would be not necessarily Mad-Eye Moody, but a Mad-Eye Moody type, right? An old guy, he's grumpy, he's been an aura for years, and he's set in his way of doing things. But he gets a new partner, a Tonks-like character, someone new and talented and progressive and enthusiastic and wants to try new ways of doing things. So the moody type character could be embroiled in an ongoing court case as a subplot because maybe he used less than acceptable means of capturing a dark wizard in a previous case. The two butt heads, but eventually they learn from each other. And the best part is that across the season, they'd be tasked with a case of hunting a magical serial killer. And I'm thinking some sort of performative serial killer. Like, if you ever watched Dexter, like the Doomsday Killer, like all of their victims were subject to weird rituals, which could sort of allow us to tiptoe a line into religion 
within the wizarding world, like rooted in paganism or something ancient. And as we progress through the season, our auras find clues and have to piece it all together. And there's just so much you could do with this. Like that side of dark magic would be so exciting to explore. Plus we could look at the wizarding equivalent of forensics, the wizarding court system. I love this concept, I have for years. I bang on about it to anyone who will listen. I've already made a video all about it. I give this concept an A. Apparently people want this. Like I haven't seen the stage show or read the book script of the stage show, but my knowledge of The Cursed Child is that everybody who I know who has seen it, which is quite a few people, say the production of the show is excellent, but the plot is terrible. Like people have described it as just being terrible fan fiction, although some people have said it's an insult to fan fiction, so I tried to reserve my judgment since I haven't seen it, but I've heard some of the plot points and it's hard to get excited about something like that. I will not give you any spoilers, but I'm gonna give this a D tier as a concept. These are obviously not TV shows we're actually going to get. Instead, we're gonna get a reboot of the Harry Potter series. In this video, I explore how I would make the first season good from a book that doesn't exactly lend itself to the TV show format. So you might wanna watch that one next. Otherwise, you're just gonna to have to sit there and look at me smiling at you. Click it.